Welcome back guys. This is going to be a little bit different from the usual episodes. While we're on the four week break, I'm going to do a few episodes based on a certain driver. Um, and where better to start than the man of the hour, Daniel Ricciardo. Um, it's well known, Danny Rick is no longer driving in the sport anymore, he's been being released from his contract effective immediately. How much of a mess this has been though? It was handled horribly. We all knew it was his last race yet. He wasn't allowed to do anything to commemorate that, no donuts or anything, there was no nice slow lap into the pits or anything like that. The unprofessionalism in sacking Danny Rick himself, um, there wasn't a thank you uh, for everything or anything, just effective immediate, terminated from his contract post on uh, social media. I think his fans deserve better than that at least. Um, the unfairness in the decision as well, considering those on the grid that don't deserve to be in the sport. I'm sure as soon as I say that, a few names pop into he like people's heads. Maybe just one name pops into a few heads. And also the mess this whole situation has caused, including trouble with RB's main sponsors. Um, so let's jump into it. Many of us found out through social media first before any official sort of statement. And say official statement because in my eyes an Instagram post does not count as an official statement from any team. It's okay to reiterate something that was said in a press conference or something but I am growing more and more annoyed recently at how poorly a world stage sport, arguably the biggest sport in the world because it's one of very few that travels from country to country, handles news from their team so poorly they seem to have zero empathy or communication skill when it comes to important announcements. And what's worse is a lot of the time, drivers don't even find out the news until they themselves read it in a social media platform, which is absolutely terrible. Imagine getting up to go to work tomorrow morning and then seeing on Instagram that you've been sacked but you haven't been told. Any team on the world stage should be able to communicate professionally and responsibly. No excuses. They should especially be telling the drivers the news so that they don't have to find out on social media at the same time as their fans. I understand this was something that was um, communicated behind closed doors before it was communicated to the fans, but I still don't agree with it being an Instagram post. It should have been a press conference. Um, it was very lazily handled through social media though. Um, I mean, what happened to the days of press conferences? At least a post which is now deleted from their media account, probably from the backlash that they received from it, but it said something along the lines of, effective immediately, Danny Rick has been released from his contract and will no longer be racing with the team in F1 for the remainder of the season, which is honestly a massive slap in the face. If it was a young driver who didn't make the cut and had only been in F1 since the start of the season, then yes, yeah, you can expect that kind of treatment and goodbye. But this is Danny Rick. He's the Shuey legend himself. He deserved a better send-off. He deserved an announcement. At least uh, an announcement to be made at the end of the race. He deserved to finish the season in an F1 car so they can ride out straight to the last race. He can finish on better terms. And so that he could have some closure. No, it was kind of taken away from him. Instead, we get rumours going into the weekend. We get um, the request to do the fastest lap, which was also a bit of a slap in the face as well. But then at the end of the race, we don't even get a team radio on the team's principle or anything. Just a quiet radio silence drive into the pit in which a very dejected, and tearful Danny Rick pulls up and takes as much time as he can in the car to save every moment. And it's a sad end and a poorly handled situation. He deserves much, much better than that. Like I say, he should have been in the F1 car right till the end of the season, having his last race in Abu Dhabi. Donuts on the pit straight with whoever's won the championship, probably Max. And a nice team radio saying thanks for everything. I've always said for me personally, Danny Rick is a worthy champion. I can easily see him winning world championships, but for some reason the luck was never on his side. He always got overlooked and maybe, just maybe, joined the sport at the wrong time with the likes of Lewis dominating seasons, Sebastian, Max, 
as much as I hate to admit. There's no argument though, Red Bull 100% favoured Max over Danny when he joined the team, and I have no idea why. Well, let's not forget, Red Bull are not afraid to show their favouritism. I am very surprised he ever went back to the team considering how they treated him in the past, especially after the uh, famous Monaco 2016 incident that led him led to him losing the race that he very much had in his back pocket that weekend. As he said on the radio, once the checkered flag um, came through, there are no words that can make it better, and that pretty much applies to the situation right now. I remember my feelings when I was watching that and I couldn't believe it, I'd just seen that, nor even understand it. Um, for those not sure what I'm talking about, the Monaco GP where Danny um, was leading from worse, they called him into the pit lane from the lead and it was their call from the team and once he came in the pit crew were there, but only half, so the ones that take the tyres off were there, but they had no tyres ready to put on. The other half of his pit crew were in the garage and there was no tyres to put on. I mean, what pit crew has half its mechanics out there to take tyres off and the other half nowhere to be found? It not only cost him position, but it also cost him the clear race win in a weekend where Mercedes and Lewis have been struggling, so it was an easy 25 points. The mood between Danny and the team from then on ultimately changed forever and there was also an incident in Barcelona where he was leading the race, but Red Bull chose to favour Max for some reason, and they put Danny Rick, who was in the lead at this point, on the slower three-stop strategy, uh, when every other team was doing two stops, and they put Max on the more preferred two-stop strategy, meaning it not only put him out of the podium places, but it meant that, that Max then went on to the optimum strategy, and it gifted the win to Max. Um, with decisions like that, I mean, speaking of Barcelona as well, that's come out in, I think it was Danish media, the Helmut Marco has been trying to get rid of Daniel Ricciardo since Barcelona this year. Um, and I can't, I just don't know why. He's always the driver that's overlooked. Um, but Red Bull have infamously have the second seat called the dead seat where you go to end your career, and I feel like that was Danny's mistake, signing with Red Bull in the first place. If he had signed with any other team, would we be saying goodbye to a world champion by now? We can if, and but about it all night, but the fact is we have lost an amazing talent and still deserves to be in the sport. There are definitely other drivers on the grid right now that do not deserve to be there, but that is money is keeping them in the game. Give Danny Rick the car and he will bring in the points and the results all day long. He has proven this time and time again too. He's the king of late breaking, which is such a joy to see in action. When he was at Red Bull with a decent car behind him, the overtakes he was pulling off left you speechless and you don't lose that. That skill stays with you. He's still that guy. He just doesn't have the car to perform, which isn't his fault. But, as in recent years has shown, as soon as that car has it and he has that chance, he does not disappoint. He brings it home all the time. Maybe he's too nice behind closed doors. I don't know. Uh, maybe when Red Bull was screwing him over, he gave that Danny Rick smile. Um, he forgave him and sort of said, yeah, no worries, on to the next one. From there on, they had a, an inch, so they took a mile maybe. We'll never know. I kind of feel like the one thing he was missing through his career was maybe that selfishness. Um, we saw it again in the race it's just been. He pitted to take fastest lap to help Max win the championship for the team that's now terminated his contract. For the team that screwed him over before. For the team that screwed him over twice before. For the team that's never actually really helped him. I just don't get it. Um, if it was me, I'd, especially going into that race, knowing it was my last race, I wouldn't be pitting just to help somebody else out. Um, maybe if he'd have fought like Lewis and Nico did, like Sebastian and Mark Webber did, like Ert uh, and Senna and Alan Prost, 
And even like how Piastri is putting up a fight against Lando, maybe we might have seen a Red Bull favour Danny instead of Max, and he actually won in a championship like he deserves. But in its own sense, where I personally may think kindness might have been his undoing, it is also what's made him who he is. Always smiling from ear to ear. There's never been an interview that I've skipped because it's just always entertaining and a pleasure to watch. He lights up any room he walks into, makes those around him laugh and repeatedly spotted checking on other drivers and cracking jokes. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware when they do the, what is it they call it? Is it the parade where they go around in the truck? Um, driver's parade. I don't know why I was struggling so much to think of that. But there's been a few times where some drivers have been kneeling down and a bit dejected and he always checks on them, stands with them, speaks with them. He's a key person in the sport. Um, he's always cracking jokes, sometimes naughty ones in press conferences, sometimes practical jokes when they're having interviews with Sky. I'd be willing to bet um, it would have been a huge honour to be his teammate. and. Uh, I think that's echoed by the reaction from the other drivers on social media. Um, so many of them leaving comments for him, which is more than RB or Red Bull did, which is another annoying factor. The drivers wrote sentences or three, four lines to show their appreciation to his contribution to the sport, while RB and Red Bull just used a single emoji each. An emoji their own driver and that's the best they could come up with just a single emoji i mean that says it all in a nutshell doesn't it it's uh incredibly frustrating to see however you guys did not disappoint you guys let them know exactly how you felt and it was a joy so 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 many reiterating the fact and how it's all been handled so tragically how pathetic it is that they didn't make a proper announcement or anything like that how they couldn't even be bothered to write a few words about him i think that is why the social media post that they originally put out saying his turn his contract has been terminated has now been deleted um i think that was on instagram as well it's been replaced now with a thank you image with a few lines of text instead um but i don't think if there had been initial backlash that there was I don't think they would have bothered. I think they would have just kept that initial post instead of changing it. But just when you thought it wasn't going to get any worse, literally hours later, Liam Lawson chimes up with a social media post on how happy he is to be promoted to an F1 driver taking Danny's seat. Jesus Christ, read the room. What's worse is we're on a four-week break. He could have easily waited for Danny Rick to have his moment and then release his happiness of being an F1 driver like a week or two before the next race. But no, literally hours after the team make a post on how they're releasing Danny from his contract effective immediately, he chimes in with his post saying he's happy to be a driver taking Danny's seat. I get it. From his point of view, it's a massive high to be part of the 22 best drivers in the world. It's probably an experience that, well, it's a limited experience, isn't it? Something I'll never experience, but just driving an F1 car in itself would be amazing. But read the room. There's a time and a place, and all it did was open yourself up to an onslaught of comments basically saying, this is not the time. Let Danny have a minute in the spotlight. It's not even that. Just let Danny say goodbye. Let him have this. But it sums the team up in a nutshell, doesn't it? Whoever was the his social media marketing team or admin or manager should have been saying, look, leave it for a couple of weeks. Everybody knows you, you're going to be replacing him because you were in the running to replace Danny Rick next year. So everybody knows you're going to be replacing him this year. You don't need to be making a post about it right after he's just been let go. But no, we never got any of that. It was just, it's just sad day for the team management wise and I don't get it um, why replace him at this point in the season it's it's too late in the season to make any sort of change point wise for a team that's that low down that's struggling that much with a car that's that bad 
So it's not like Liam Lawson can just come in and magically get the car into the points. There's six or five races left. And it's triple headers for the next few races. So literally when we go back to racing, two triple headers and then the season is finished. Daniel Rick could easily have rode the season now. I don't get why they're replacing him. I did hear a rumour that it was in William Lawson's contract that if uh, he ended his F2 contract this year, but part of the clause was he was to be in an F1 car by the end of the year. And personally, I don't believe that. I think it's a bit of a naughty clause in the contract because that forces the team to give you the seat, whether you're good or not, whether you're Lance Stroll or Wando Norris. Um, I hope it's not true because whoever their manager is is a bit of a genius, but it's also... A very bad situation because it just allows anybody to come into the sport and then it means that good drivers are getting pushed out all the time. But with Helmut Marco saying to media in a different country that he's been trying to get rid of him since Barcelona in the Spanish GP, I am not surprised. Um, I am not the biggest fan of Helmut Marco's, nor Jos Verstappen's, nor Christian Horner. I think the way they manage the team is something I don't agree with, but I don't understand why it's Helmut Marco's area. I don't understand what it's got to do with him. He is not the person to seek out good talent. He doesn't have any say in that area. He's not a talent seeker. He's not a manager. He's had, I think it was four races in F1 or eight races. And he didn't even finish a few of them. So for me, he doesn't quite have the CV to be spotting talent and saying who's good and who shouldn't be in the seat. But on the basis of talent, though, we have lost an amazing talent. Um, he is one of my favourite drivers. Very talented and very charismatic. Um, a very good advocate to what a world champion should be. And his talent on track is a joy to see. Um, the breathtaking overtakes that he does matched with his late breaking ability. There's a reason why they call him the king of the late breakers. And it's something that can't be matched. Lewis has done some amazing late breaking overtakes. Max has done some amazing late breaking overtakes. But matched that up with Danny Rick and he's miles in front. It's a real shame he didn't win more than eight races. Uh, he was and definitely is capable of that. And like I say, in my eyes, he's world championship material. I just always think that maybe wrong time, wrong place, wrong team. He joined when the likes of Lewis was trying to prove himself, Verstappen was trying to prove himself, and Vettel. So maybe he joined at a very crowded time. Or that's, that's the only thing that I kind of regret. I wish I'd seen him maybe be Lewis's teammate or maybe be in a car that is capable of winning a championship. Future-wise, I have no idea what's ahead for him, though. Um, there's a lot of people speculating, but maybe he'll go back home to Australia for a little while. He is quite a family man. Um, he might touch grass and connect with family again. Um, but sport-wise, I have no idea what he may go into. Uh, he does have a wolf at NASCAR. Um, I don't see him going into IndyCars. I think... I don't, I don't see him going into Indy cars. I don't think that's for him. I think he may go into NASCAR just because of his love for the uh, V8s. I think it's V8s in NASCAR, isn't it? I'm not sure. Could be wrong. But he drove, oh, I can't remember the McLaren team principal's name, Bra Zach Brown. He drove his and he looked like a kid in a candy shop. It was amazing to watch that. But in that respect, only time will tell what's going to happen for him in the future. I'm excited for him because it opens up a lot of, of avenues. And ha being an F1 driver, at the time that he's been an F1 driver on your CV, basically gives you the key to anything. Um, to be an F1 driver, you have to be one of the best in the world. F1 is the pinnacle of the sport, so there's a reason F1 drivers go into rally, but rally drivers don't go into F1. It could be... Very interesting to see what it does in the future, but I do hope 
but maybe there is a seat in F1 for him still. Maybe in 2026 when Audi come into it. Um, this is another shame why Audi isn't creating its own team. So we don't have more cars on the team, on the grid. If we had more cars on the grid, I think you would definitely have a seat. But because they're just replacing Sauber, we'll have to see what happens. Um, but it could be a blessing in disguise for him as well. I know when I lost the job, I thought it was one of the worst things to happen, but I didn't realise it was actually a blessing in disguise for me. So it could be the same situation for him. I would much rather have this episode been a much more light-hearted send-off for him. Um, but the way it's been handled by the team and how he's been treated through the whole situation has kind of left a bit of taste in all our hearts. Um, I'd love to see him, like I say, in F1 down the line, but that prospect of more doors opening up for him excites me as well. Um, I hope whatever he does, though, he's at peace with it. And it could be... Could even be a pundit for Sky, but don't I kind of don't want that because he's better than that. He should still be driving. He is getting on a bit age wise, but different disciplines that doesn't really matter for your age. Um, touring cars have if they've had drivers that are like forty eight, I remember rightly. So age isn't really that much of an issue when it comes to different disciplines. But like I say, it's a shame that this is how we say goodbye to him. He deserves so much more of a better goodbye. Um, like I say, he deserves to ride out the, the rest of the season so he can say goodbye properly. Um, his fans deserve a better goodbye. And it's just something that F1 continues to get wrong as a sport. Major releases, like news-wise like this, they all... For some reason, just crumble to a halt and get handled terribly. But I hope the fans get the goodbye that they want. And if we see him in the sport down the line, that'll be amazing. Um, next week's podcast, because I think that'll about wrap it up there now for this week's podcast. Um, but next week's will be similar to this. It'll be a driver review. Um, this week was going to be that, but I felt we needed to talk about Danny Rick. Um, I am good. It's not something that should have happened either. He shouldn't be leaving the spot. And once again, Helmut Marco seems to have more influence than he should have. And it's a bit of a shame that all the negativity clouds it. So I think we need to focus on the, the positives that he brought us. So I'll end this episode with a phrase that he used to say. Enjoy the butterflies. Mm -hmm.